Hello friends, this video on surface chemistry part 1 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. The objective of this lesson is to describe the interfacial phenomena at its significance. Please note, we'll talk about the interfacial phenomena that happens on the surface. We'll define the word or term adsorption and we'll classify into two parts, physical and chemical adsorption. We'll also explain the mechanism of adsorption. We'll explain the factors that control adsorption, but we'll be focusing only on adsorption from gases on solids and solution on solids, where on the solid will be adsorbing gases or solution. We'll explain the adsorption results on the basis of Fraunhofer adsorption isotherms, where we try to find the relationship between the adsorptions and the pressure, and also concentration. We'll explain the role of catalyst in the industry that also uh, follows the surface chemistry rules. We'll enumerate the nature of uh, colloidal state. We'll talk about colloidal state. We'll talk about the preparation properties and purification of collide, collides. We'll talk about immersion, that's also a type of collides. And we'll also talk about the preparation and properties of colloids. We'll talk about the gel formation. We'll, you, we'll find the uses of colloids. Now let's start the chapter. The first question is, what is surface chemistry? To explain you surface chemistry, the best example is, in the morning, after taking bath, your whole skin is clean, right? Your body is clean. Now when you go out to play, either, you know, you go out for bicycle or cricket, you go out to play football, any kind of game, or sometimes you even go out to market or school. When you come back home, you see that your face is dirty. Why your face is dirty? Because on the surface of your skin, this dirt has accumulated. So this is your surface of skin. On this, you will get dirt. Right? Dirt get attached or dust particles get attached to your surface of your skin. So here if you see, the surface is playing a role. You see, the dirt or the dust particle doesn't penetrate into your blood. That doesn't happen. Correct? This dirt particle is only at the surface. Hope you are understanding the difference. This dirt particles are not going inside your blood. It's going only on the surface of your skin. And why it is only on the surface? Why it is not going deep into your blood? Surface chemistry has answer to it. A next good example is, so here if you see there is a cold ring and a spilled cold ring. On this, on the left hand side is a tissue paper, right hand side is a plastic. Now if you see, on the left hand side, the whole cold ring is absorbed by this tissue paper. But on the right hand side, if you see, the cold ring is only on the surface of the plastic. Right? If you see, the cold ring, the red cold ring is not gone inside the plastic. But on the left hand side, I have used tissue paper, the normal tissue paper. In that case, the whole cold ring is absorbed. So if you see, there is a difference between absorption and adsorption. On the right hand side, the cold ring is only on the surface of the plastic. It didn't go inside the plastic, right? Or even if you use pressing paper or the normal paper which we, on which we uh, write, that paper also you will see, the cold ring will not be absorbed properly. It will be on the surface of that, the normal paper we use. But if you use tissue paper, the whole cold ring, or if you use a cloth, a piece of cloth, then the whole cold ring will be totally absorbed in this piece of cloth or tissue paper. On the right hand side, you see the cold ring is only on the surface. This is a good example of adsorption and absorption. So adsorption, if you see, everything is happening on the surface and that's all is nothing but surface chemistry. A two good example of surface chemistry in our daily life. So with this, what is the definition of surface chemistry? Surface chemistry deals with phenomena that occurs at the surface or interface. When you're talking about your skin, you're talking about the surface of your skin, or when you're talking about the surface of a plastic where the water gets adsorbed. We'll talk about different examples of surface chemistry in our day-to-day -day life. Just understand surface chemistry is nothing but the chemistry is a branch of chemistry that deals with the phenomena that occurs at the surface or interface. So phenomena that occurs at surface or interface is called surface chemistry. 
So next question is why should we study surface chemistry? So if you talk, if you have heard about this word enzyme, in fact, we talked about the function of enzymes in the last few chapters, the whole enzyme mechanism that is helping our body to survive, it breaks the food, it does a lot of things in the body. The whole mechanism of the catalyst, the biocatalyst enzymes is based on surface chemistry. It all happens on the surface. We talk about the corrosion. Corrosion is nothing but surface chemistry where oxygen is adsorbed on the surface of iron. So if you, to, to prove this, what you can do is if you break this corroded bolt, you see that inside whatever bolt you get, the piece of iron you get that won't be corroded. Only the corrosion happens on the surface. Correct? So since it happens on the surface, we talk about surface chemistry. Blood is a good example of colloid and that is nothing but it, it follows the surface chemistry rules. We'll talk about that surface chemistry, the colloids in the surface chemistry. If you talk about the soap, it follows all surface chemistry rules again, right? The way it cleans, it is all surface chemistry. We'll talk about that also. Any food particle, you see most of the food particles like jam, butter, milk, juice, ice cream, um, the beer, the cold ring, the cheese, the jelly, the mayonnaise, all these are my colloids. And it comes under surface chemistry, we'll talk about that. If you see here, the rain, the cloud, the fog, if you see here, the mist, everything we have to study in the part of surface chemistry because the way it is formed, surface has a huge role to play, right? So we'll talk about these things also in the surface chemistry. We see surface chemistry has huge application in our day-to-day -day life. If you see the silica gel, silica gel is used in most of the packing box. When you pack electronic device or even food particles or clothes, you don't want it to be spoiled easily because water can spoil things, right? The moisture in the air can spoil things. So the silica gel, it adsorbs water on the surface. We'll talk about this also. On the surface of the silica gel, it adsorbs water. And thus the box in which you have kept silica gel, this becomes moisture free. And this lasts the life of the substance or product inside the box. Silica gel is very, very important in our, in our day to day life. And that also uses the phenomena of surface chemistry. Now, before we study surface chemistry, there are some prerequisite for surface chemistry. As I told that the surface attracts particles, right? And I'll tell you why. This surface, any surface will attract particles. Whether it's dust particles or whether it's gases, for example, oxygen, nitrogen, any gas or any particles, it attracts. Why? I'll tell you in the next few slides. Now, so that it attracts particles. If you keep a object which has a good surface, for example, gold or anything, iron or any paper, anything, because most of the thing has surface, or even, in fact, you itself, right? When you stand somewhere, the particles get attracted and you, you get dirt on your face, right? Same thing. So the this behavior to attract, behavior to attract foreign particles on the surface, this is something which we'll be dealing in surface chemistry and we'll tell why, why it is there. It's very strong, right? So before we study surface chemistry for a given object or given material, it is required that it has to be clean, right? It has to be ultra clean surface. Clean surface. But how do we achieve this? Because the moment you keep this surface out, it will attract all this foreign particles, but you want it to be extra clean to study, only to study the behavior of the surface. And that's what we'll do in surface chemistry. So to do this, we need a very high vacuum. The vacuum of the order 10 to the power minus 8 to 10 to the power minus 9 Pascal. This is the range of vacuum. We need very, very high vacuum, correct? So if you see to get this by what we do is, we put the substance for which we want to study the surface chemistry in this jar and we use this vacuum pump. So the moment you use vacuum pump, everything is sucked out. Everything is sucked out, right? There is nothing in this. Since there is nothing in this, there is no oxygen, there is no nitrogen, there is no gas, there is no particle in this. So it will not be able to attract anything. Only whatever we provide in this jar for experiment, that will be there. Correct. So we achieve this ultra clean surface using vacuum, very high vacuum. 
let's talk about the features of surface chemistry. See, surface chemistry revolves around two parts. The first is the adsorption. I've used this terms earlier also. Adsorption, which is nothing but you adsorb any particle on the surface, right? On the surface. It is difficult from absorption. We'll explain that. And the next critical particle is the catalysis. The whole catalysis thing also works on the adsorption. And the third, actually, there are three features, is the colloids. In colloids, there are so many kinds of colloids, but we'll be studying only emulsion and gels. They, they are almost eight kind of colloids, actually. But we'll be studying only emulsion and gels. So adsorption, where a particular particles or gases adsorbed on the surface, we'll talk about this. The catalysis process, for example, this, and the colloid. Blood is a good example of colloids. We'll talk about these things in this whole chapter. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch more videos. Attempt free online tests, get free study materials, find tutors and mentors, and much more. Thanks once again.